got to the point after being married 13 years, I had multiple things that were going to make it difficult and so that the only safe alternative to getting pregnant and staying pregnant was going to be doing in vitro fertilization. So after being married about a year, we started trying to have kids and start a family and nothing happened for probably about a year. I was visiting my primary care doctor and I shared with her through a flood of tears kind of what each test was coming back and what I suspected. And she said, well, have you considered embryo adoption? And I'm like, what's that? <laughs> From this batch of embryos through in vitro fertilization, we ended up having 13 very strong viable embryos. They implanted two, and that became our fraternal twins, Abigail and Rachel. So the question then became, well then what do we do with our 11 remaining embryos? When they had all these embryos um, left and they were in storage, they had just three options. They can give them to science to be, you know, for science experiments. Um, they could basically have them thawed and basically let them die, or they could keep them in frozen storage and offer them to another family to adopt um, and to give a chance at, um, at a full life. We created them with the intent of giving them life, uh, but we weren't the ones who were gonna be able to give them life. And we wanted to find another family who was looking for their path to parenthood that they couldn't get on their own. If we went through the mechanisms to create these embryos, then we need to give them the opportunity for life. Kelly really wanted to be able to conceive a child or, you know, and, and to be able to give birth, really. And so this was really the option that provided that opportunity. A lot of people questioned me, well, you know, is embryo adoption ethical? It absolutely was ethical because we were fighting for the lives of these little ones. The, the other important thing is that Dan and I believe that life begins at conception. So knowing that we were giving an opportunity for one of the 600,000 frozen embryos in the U.S. to have a full life, it really, I felt that was really important to us. We liked the idea of a donor program because we wanted to give them life, but we also wanted to have a say. In, in who those embryos go to. So we did what every 21st century family does. You Google, Google a question, throw it out in cyberspace and hope that some magical answer comes to you. Um, so sure enough, there was one of the first things was about embryo adoption. We had never heard of it, had no idea what it was. My first, my first thought was, this sounds really sci-fi. I can carry someone else's embryo it just it, yeah it sounded that was the initial thought that I had having a profile come across for us to read and see what we thought about this family that was interested in embryo adoption and possibly adopting our embryos um, we just fell in love with them as soon as we read their profile their their history their story of how they came together they were uh, for us uh, some of the big things were they were so much like us and what we, we came to realize for ourselves is if you can't raise your own children, at least we wanted someone who was as much like us as possible. Really what we were hoping for and were blessed with was simply that we were connected with a family that, that wanted to start that story mm -hmm. from the beginning so that there were never any questions. That family was the Gosman family, Dan and Kelly Gosman. But we fell in love with their profile, fell in love with them. I don't know how you fall in love with somebody on paper and through a story, but we did. Um, so with Dan and Kelly, we just, we really felt like this was the right family for our embryos. We thought that perhaps we would just exchange pictures and exchange information in email and things about the kids. But Dan and I made a, a really conscious effort to start building that relationship before there were children regardless of whether there were children or not. Because in any relationship, it takes time. It doesn't happen overnight, and it's a very gradual and incremental thing. And so we chose to meet the Hendersons before we even had kids. So we went to dinner before the embryo transfer. And then after the transfer, uh, they came and brought the, the girls to see us. And it was like seriously looking into the eyes of our of our kids. And we 
didn't know, I don't think, going into it, like how open necessarily it would be. We had an idea, you know, we knew we wanted to do some communication, maybe even pictures and that kind of stuff. Um, but just as we got involved and as we met the Hendersons and got to know them and, and just, it just, God just really kind of melded all of us together. So our process and journey with them went through baby steps. And for any other family going through this process, that is probably the most healthy, smooth transition that families can have in coming together. You don't expect to go to zero to 60 in two seconds flat. You, you, you get yourself there. This is something where slow and steady wins the race. So with Dan and Kelly, we just, we really felt like this was the right family for our embryos. But obviously some of our fears uh, that kind of kind of came to the surface was, you know, well, if we're gonna adopt out our embryos, do we even have the option to know who these children are going to be as they grow up? What's our, what's our level of involvement? And we didn't want that, that feeling of what if, what did they look like? Could we pass them on the street and not, and know? not even know? Because we like anyone and everyone who goes through this, it is a roller coaster of emotions. Really the, the only fear that I had, but we researched it, was that clear definition of parenthood. There's always the fear of, you know, what will they be like and will they want to at some point be jealous or will they take control in a sense and say, well, these are our kids. I don't know if I'd want to just go grab them and say, no, you're mine. It's a real fear. That is a real fear that couples have. It's always a fear in most people's mind, but I don't think I've ever heard a story or seen a scenario where that really was a problem. Having lived it ourselves, the feelings are valid. The, the roller coaster of emotions, the what would I feel if I saw a child that, that we created being raised by somebody else? What would we feel if we saw them? How would we explain this to our children? How would our children feel if they met their genetic siblings that they are fully connected to by blood, but being raised by somebody else? How would they feel? Would they come back to us later and go, what did you do? You know, there's all those things. And until you've walked a particular road, you don't know the answer to all those questions. So we knew that whatever we were feeling, they had to be feeling something very, very similar on the other side. And I think the other thing that we really had to weigh through when we started looking into embryo adoption um, was, you know, there was the option of an open or closed adoption. I think our expectations were, you know, we'd have some communication, maybe mm -hmm. even a phone call here or there, but we were very intentional. We thought, you know, it would really be nice to meet this family um, before we actually do the transfer. And so, um, and I think that's what really started the bond was as we met over dinner. Mm -hmm. We we kind of joke about it was uh, <laughs> like kind of like a blind date, you know. <laughs> but it was really exciting. I mean, it was a, a just a great time to get to know each other's hearts and mm -hmm. realize that our goals for our children were the same as theirs. We have four four adults that all have the same vested interest in all five children which is to see them grow up to be healthy and to be connected. So our, our family tree has now expanded beyond what we have genetically. We've now grafted the Gosmans into our family mm -hmm. just as much as they've grafted us into theirs. You know, we, we've had, we vacation together, we, we meet each other, we come together. We meet each other's we, families. We meet each other's we families. You know, we, we, try to, we try to plan these, these uh, periodic get togethers. Our hope is that as they grow and make make personal choices is that they mm -hmm. they have now developed relationships along their childhood so that they see each other as brothers and sisters or at a, at least as close cousins or something to that effect. I think too we thought through, you know, when it comes to those years where they start really thinking through who am I and where did I come from and so they already have the base established and if they have any questions they can pick up the phone and they can call their genetic family and say if we can't provide any answers um, and we don't have what they need they can you know come and visit if they wanted to you know and say hey you know here's something I've been thinking about so you know they don't have to have potentially this void that they mm -hmm. wouldn't be able to answer. They've got another resource out there that they can reach out to. So the result of all of that is that our, our collective children 
all have this extended family. We, we've basically grafted two families together through this open communication and open relationship. So we're really, we are, we are experiencing life together. This is normal. This is your normal. We had baby seeds. We wanted to share those baby seeds. From those baby seeds, you have this connection to these other two children and you know your brothers and sisters and you're going to do life together. They have a sense from the time they were born that they are here because they were loved. One thing that I think oftentimes through traditional adoption, children as they grow up, there is this sense of um, I wasn't loved by someone and that's why this family is raising me. It's because somebody didn't want me or somebody didn't love me. And we are raising them with the sense of you are here because you are loved. Because there was this family here that believed in you, that um, knew you were a living being and wanted to give you a chance at life because they loved you. But what is important is what you can do for these kids. What a wonderful gift to give all of these kids a chance to do life together. But I can tell you by being on the other side, not only can you do it, it is completely worth it. Scripture talks about how God knew us before we were born. Pursuing embryo adoption is about love. We love these little beings even before they have a full life that joint love with the Hendersons and ourselves that has brought Trevor and Aubrey to where they are today.